Hi guys, it is Chris. I'm going to do a brief how-to video. I've had a lot of questions of people who weren't able to join us in the gym back when we did it in the gym for Pump It Up and aren't quite sure about form. They're a little hesitant to try one of the online classes because they have not had anybody show them the correct form or terminology or anything. So I'm just gonna take a few minutes here. If you've never done Pump It Up before, I'd prefer that you watch this before you jump into one of our Pump It Ups. If you have done Pump It Up and started doing it online and you're just not quite sure and you need like some help with it, this would also be a good one to watch. So what you're going to need to do a Pump It Up class is either an adjustable barbell set, which would be something that looks like this, that you would have plates that you would take away and add, depending on what muscle groups you're using. If you have one of the adjustable barbell sets that has like holes all around it, these also can be used for hand weights. You would just put your thumb through it and these become a hand weight here. If you do not have a barbell set up at home, you're just gonna use hand weights. If you've got two different sets of hand weights, that would be preferable, a lighter set and a heavier set. I'm not gonna tell you what that is, so whatever you consider light and heavy, a lighter set and a heavier set, because when we're doing a warm up, when we're doing smaller muscles, you're gonna to wanna to use the lighter weights. When we're doing big compound movements that use a lot of muscle groups, you're gonna to wanna to go a little bit heavier. So two sets would be awesome. While we're demonstrating some of the stuff here, I'm actually gonna use an unloaded barbell. So if it's your first time and you've never done this before, you may wanna do this how-to with no weight at all, a barbell, very, very light hand weights, like a soup can in each hand if you're using hand weights, or like a broomstick, your choice. So we're just gonna work on some form a little bit. Forward flexion is something you'll hear me say sometimes. Forward flexion de determines anything where you're hinging forward from your hips. That can include squats. Squats are a type of forward flexion where you're coming down and you'll notice that the upper body hinges a little bit. So what we wanna be careful of is folding forward with our upper body. So in a typical pump it up class, we're gonna start with a warm up, which is where you're gonna kinda of get a preview of all the muscle groups, all the things you're gonna be seeing. And then we'll use that for light weights. And then we're gonna break things down muscle group by muscle group. Now, sometimes I do change up the order of things depending on what we're doing so that we don't have to get up and down and up and down off the floor. So if we're gonna be doing the floor work for some things, I'll kind of smoosh those all at the end together. So the order is not always exactly the same. However, most often after the warm up, we're gonna be jumping into squats. That is gonna be really heavy work. You're gonna be sweating and panting by the end of that one. The nice thing about squats is that you don't have to use any weight at all. You can just use your body weight and that would be right here, just doing squats with body weight. If you have the hand weights, most of the time you're gonna be using a heavy hand weight right here on your collarbone, elbows underneath it. So if you've got hand weights, here's where you're going to be for squats, okay? If you've got the barbell, here is where you're gonna be for squats, with that bar on the meaty part of your upper back. You never want it to be up on your neck, that is dangerous. So make sure it's on the shoulders, the meaty part of your upper back. And like I said, no matter which version you're using, no weight, hand weight, or barbell, what you want is a forward flexion where you're bending at your hips and your knees, keeping your chest proud, and lowering like you're sitting into a very low chair. Imagine like you're going to visit your kids at daycare and they have those little tiny chairs. That's what you have to sit down in, okay? So two things to be careful of with squats. Thing number one, no matter what weight you're using, is this collapsing of the upper body. You wanna be very careful of that, of when you're coming forward, your upper body is kind of collapsing forward. Think about keeping this shelf under your chest lifted so it's parallel to the floor, chest is proud, and you're dropping those hips down, but your upper body, your upper body is hinging, for sure it's hinging, but your hinge point is your hips, not your back. So if it helps to practice that with no weight at all until you get the form, by all means, do it without any weight at all until you get that form right. The other thing to be careful of is your weight coming too far forward. And I see this a lot, a lot, a lot, where people think a squat is something like this, okay? This is gonna be very hard on your knees. And if you hear people say that squats hurt their knees, nine times out of 10, it's because they're doing them wrong. And that means if I've got a weighted barbell or I've got a heavy hand weight here, as I'm coming down, that means all of this weight is going bink, right into my knees, which is what we don't want. We're trying to distribute it in these large muscles of the legs and the glutes. And the way you do that is to keep your weight back. Keep your weight back. Imagine that chair, that very low chair behind you, 
and oh, oh, where's the chair, where's the chair, where's the chair? If you're trying to aim for a chair with your booty, you're not gonna be out here, okay? The chair isn't out here, it's back here. So think about that, if your weight is out here, push your butt back and aim for that chair. One easy way to check is if you're coming down and you peek down and you can't see your toes, generally that means that your knee is shooting out over past your toes. When you look down in a squat, you should be able to see your toes, okay? No matter here, if I'm looking down, I'm looking at my toes. If I'm looking down and all I can see is knees, <laughs> try pushing your booty back. And again, practice with no weights until you get that form right. Moving on from squats, generally the next track you're going to see most of the time is a biceps track where we're working the front of the arm. Again, you can use the barbell for that, which is gonna be a little bit of a lighter weight, or you can use the hand weights for that, which is gonna be a little of a heavier weight. Under hand grip, you're gonna just be going up and down. The nice thing about a biceps curl is that the elbow only bends one direction. So it's a little hard to screw it up. You just go up and you go down. You'll see pulses right here, belly button high. You'll see half range. You'll see slow, where we're going up slow. All, but generally, it's just up and down. Nothing more complicated than that. That said, one of the most, well, two of the most common issues that I see with people who are doing biceps curls who aren't familiar with correct form, especially if you're using hand weights. If you have a barbell, you actually have a bar in front of you that stops it. You've got hand weights, you don't have that bar. So two things I see a lot with barbells and hand weights is people who come, especially if you're using something that you find a little heavier, is you're coming down and the elbow's pulling back. So if you did it like that, it's gonna look like this. Do you see what's happening here? My arms are not getting straight. It looks like a lot's going on here, but my range of motion is actually very, very shallow. I'm coming up and then my elbows are pulling back. What you want is your elbows to get straight. So your range of motion goes collarbone to thighs all the way up to your chest, all the way down to your thighs. Do you see the difference between this and this, okay? Where my elbows are not straightening, it just looks like a lot, but it's not really a lot, okay? That's mistake number one. So really concentrate on keeping those weights out to the front of you and stopping at your legs. Likewise, again, if you've got hand weights, the other temptation is to swing. When you've got a barbell, this is not possible because you hit yourself in the legs, but when you got hand weights, I see this a lot. It's the swinging motion, using momentum. Again, your legs are your stopping point. Elbow straight, right here. It doesn't matter whether we're doing pulses, whether we're doing one at a time, whatever. Right here in front, okay? Moving on, most of the time, again, sometimes we change up the order. Most of the time next, we're gonna be working the back of our body. This is gonna be the peak of the workout. This is gonna be the heaviest weights you're going to use when you can stay in control of them, okay? So if you're using a barbell, this is where you're gonna pile on those plates so that you are in full beast mode. If you're using the hand weights, you're gonna go with the heaviest set of hand weights that you have that you can stay in control of. That's always the caveat. You need to be able to maintain control. If your form's all over the place, stay with a lighter weight until you master that form. So I'm practicing this without weights just so I can slow it down and do some slow-mo for you. What you want, I'm gonna start from the bottom up. My feet are right underneath my hips. Moving up, my knees are soft. I'm gonna pull the chest open and suck the belly into my spine. So belly is pulled in, knees are soft. And if you've got a barbell, that bar is pulled right up against your legs. If you're using the hand weights, they're right here next to you and your shoulders are pulled back. Think of a clothespin and you're just gonna take that clothespin and pin your shoulder blades together back there. That's where they're gonna stay the entire track. That's a little tricky when we go into that forward flexion for deadlifts and dead rows. So I'm gonna do it first with the hand weights and then with the bar. Pull the shoulder blades back, pin them back with that clothespin, abs in. I will say, this track tends to be the trickiest one for people who are new to weight training. It does take some time to master. So if you're not getting it right off the bat, that's okay. Stay with the lighter weights. Just keep practicing until you get the hang of it. Then you can pile on the weights. Knees are soft, nice and tall. I'm going to hinge forward in slow motion. Check out that forward flexion. Remember, back stays straight. Where are your shoulder blades? They're pinned together with the clothespin, yes? Push your booty back so that my back is nice and straight. Again, watch for this collapsing where we're collapsing forward. That's an injury waiting to happen. So pin the shoulders back, abs in, hinging forward, booty pushes back. This is a deadlift 
as we do it in Pump It Up. Those of you who have ever done weight, weight room training know that a true deadlift starts at the floor and it looks a little bit different. In this class, we use what's called a Romanian deadlift. That's just a lot to say. So I call it a deadlift where we start at the top and the weight comes to just below our kneecaps. That is the range of motion for the deadlifts in this class. Starting at the top, weights come just below your kneecaps so that your back is flat, your butt is back. You should feel the hamstrings and the glutes lighten up. So go ahead and practice a couple of those, either with hand weights or with a barbell or a broomstick. Just hinge forward, push your butt back, keep your weights or the bar or the broomstick on your leg just below your kneecap. Now stop here and check yourself. Are your shoulder blades pinned together? Are you feeling the back of your legs and your glutes lighting up? Is your back straight? Is your chest open? Dig your heels in and as you come up, you're pushing those heels into the ground and pulling up out of those heels. That's your deadlift. Dead row, similar, but we add a little bit of upper body motion to it. So we come forward, slow motion, just below the kneecaps, back flat, abs in, shoulder blades pinned back, and then I'm gonna row by pulling the elbows back behind me. So I'm gonna pull the elbows behind, squeeze the shoulders together, and then back to the kneecaps, and then I stand up. So it's a four count move. We're gonna try it in slow motion, ready? Here we go. Knees, Pull your elbows back, back to the knees, and then stand up. Let's do it just a hair quicker, ready? It's knees, pull, knees, and stand. So it's four, three, two, one. Knees, belly, knees, rise. Waist to your knees, close to your belly. You're squeezing your shoulder blades together. That's what it looks like with the hand weights. Now with the barbell, very much the same, but this one you're actually going to be bringing the barbell to your belly button. So same thing, here we go. In knees, squeeze, knees, stand. One, two, three, four. How's that form? Back straight, yes? Abs in. Give me one more. Down, pull, down, stand. Beautiful. You should already feel something on the back of your legs, back of your body. And stay with the barbell and then I'll switch to hand weights. The next one tends to be the trickiest thing that we do in this class, all right? I want you to imagine an envelope that's kind of pasted to your belly and you're gonna, whether you got hand weights or barbell, you're gonna tuck those weights into that envelope. We're gonna do this in slow motion again. So we're gonna slide the weights up in front of you. Check out where they are, they're on my body. I see this a lot, this stuff right here. Do you see what's happening here? The weight is coming away from my body. You'll never be able to use much weight because you're going to be limited by these muscles right here. You want to use these muscles up here, these bigger muscles. So you're going to keep the weight close to your body, draw it up just to your rib cage right here. See where my elbows are. See where the weight is. It's on my body. It's not coming out away from my body. And then we're going to do quick elbows in three, two, one, flip them. Okay? Let's try that again. Elbows are going to be on top. Pull the weights out of the envelope, slide them out of the envelope, rib cage and elbows go under in three, two, one, flip. Now check out where my knees are. I flipped my elbows, now what are my knees doing? They're a little bit bent, you know why? Because our next move is gonna be, we're gonna push it up to the ceiling, straightening our legs so that we're using our legs for the power. So here's where you're at. Be careful of this, this is a temptation to look up at your bar or your weights but that's gonna put a lot of strain on your neck. So try to keep your head neutral if you can. You're gonna come back to your collarbone. Now the tricky part is to slide the weights back into the envelope. So we're gonna flip the elbows back on top in three, two, one. Flip, slide them back into the envelope, okay? Let's try it slow-mo again and we'll speed it up. Slide those weights out of the envelope, elbows flip, knees soft, drive, catch, knees are bent, yes and then they slide back into the envelope. We're gonna go four counts. Ready, set, go. It's four, three, two, one. Again, four, three, two, one. Again, four, three, now hold it right here. Hold it, hold it. I'm gonna turn around <laughs> so you can see. If I had a small child or a good friend of mine standing right in front of me, you should be able to do this without smacking them in the face. If your weights are coming away from your body, anybody standing in front of you is gonna get busted under the chin or in the face. 
So I've got my good friend here right in front of me. Watch me. I'm going to slide right here. I go up here and then I go back down again. I go up, I push, I go down here. Okay. So this is a good way to practice it. You've got a wall or something at home, or you can ask a, your friend or your significant other to stand in front of you if they trust you. But really stand just about six to eight inches away and see if you can do that without hitting the wall. If you're hitting the wall, that means that you're swinging those weights out in front of you. I'm gonna do just a couple of them with the hand weights. So slide them into the envelope. Ready, four counts in three, two, one. Here we go. Up, one, two, three, slide them back in. And one, two, three, four. Give me four, three, two, one more time. Up, four, three, two, one. So the motion is the same. It just feels a little bit different when we're using hand weights instead of the barbell. Moving on. Generally, the next set you're gonna see is going to be triceps, the back of the arm. Again, not always, but generally. Now triceps, we do all kinds of stuff. We do dips, we do push-ups, we do kickbacks, we do skull crushers. So it's hard to show everything that we're gonna do in that right now, but I'll pick some of the more common ones. And that, I'm gonna use a very, very lightweight here. Kickback, kickback rows come like this. It's a four count move again. It's hip, ceiling, hip, floor, four, three, two, one. We're squeezing the back of our arm. Couple things to look out for for form. Whatever weight, whatever hand the weights are in, your opposite leg is gonna be out in front. So you've got opposite to opposite. Abs, as always, are drawn in and you've got that forward flexion again. Hinging at your hips with your back straight. You can support on that bent leg if you like, but it's important to keep your back straight. I can't tell you how many times I see this nonsense right here where we're collapsing. Again, this is an injury waiting to happen and you don't get the benefit of the workout. So back is straight, hinging at your hips, not your spine. The other thing to be careful of is just like with the biceps, the tendency to swing. We have this tendency to swing where people come up, they go here, they go here, and they go down. And there's a whole lot going on here, but not a lot of muscle action, it's just momentum. So make your hip your stopping point, okay? So when you come up, we draw it to the hip, we squeeze it back, squeeze the back of the arm. When you come down, here's the tricky part. Stop at your hip. What does that do? That keeps the muscle active. I'm not coming here. This I see this a lot, where people swing that weight in all the way back to their chest. Hip, ceiling, hip, floor, hip, ceiling, hip, floor. Give me one more. Hip, ceiling, hip, floor. That keeps the muscles active. Sometimes, I'm gonna switch arms, you can switch arms with me just for some variety. Sometimes you'll see triples and even seven counts with these occasionally, where we'll come back and we'll hold it for three kickbacks. Hip, now two. Hip, now one. Now we come back down again. Again, your hip is your stopping point. So let's practice a couple of three count kickbacks. We come up, we kick it, we go three, in, two, in, one, in and down, four counts. Take it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Elbow up, kick for three, kick for two, kick for one, and give me one more. Up, remember stop at your hip, hip, one more, and then come back down. So that's one of the more common things you're gonna see. We also do, a lot of times, an extension above our head. We do this sometimes seated if we're using a chair or a step, or you can always stand up if you prefer. Feet under your hips, heavier weight in your hands, we bring it up, elbows forward, and we come back to the back of the neck, and then we extend. That's all there is to it. Bend, extend. Couple of things to watch out for here is what my arms are doing. I see this sometimes where my elbows are out to the side. Try to pull those elbows in so that they're pointing ahead of you, okay? and we're really isolating in through here. The other thing is what's going on down here. <laughs> this is an injury waiting to happen if you have a nice back porch going on and you're not really activating abs or anything. So, tuck your pelvis under, suck your abdominals in so that you're supporting through your spine, keeping your spine neutral as you come into this position. And again, sometimes you will see pulses in three or seven counts. So we come down, we go three, two, one, and we come up. All right, beautiful. Skull crushers, 
push-ups, triceps. I'm gonna leave the skull crushers and the push-ups for later because I'll talk about those in a second. But dips are one thing I do want to talk about. Give me a quick second. Because, again, dips, and you can do these off of an aerobic step, you can do them on the bottom step of the staircase, or I'm gonna use a folding chair. So anything that you can slide your booty off of can work for a dip. What I see are some very common things. Either your hands turn the wrong way, where your fingertips are back. I don't know how people do that, honestly. That is very hard on your wrists and your elbows. So I'm not sure what's going on here with the hands turned the wrong way or even out to the side. That does not hit the correct muscles and it actually is harder on your wrists. So if you're finding that there is a wrist issue where you truly have something going on with your wrists that make these dips impossible to do, that's okay. What you do is here. You can always replace these with these over the head extensions and then we'll catch up to you eventually we'll join up with you so that's an alternative you can use if you have the aerobic step you also have the option of sitting on the step and just bending and staying seated but with the true dip your fingers are facing forward your elbows are facing backward you slide your butt off the edge and we bend our elbows and we straighten our elbows that's it bend straighten a couple things to be careful of is this. See what's going on? There is something that looks like a lot of motion, but look at my arms. <laughs> what are my arms doing? Not a darn thing, okay? So it's not this. Keep your body as still as you can. Bend your elbows, straighten them. Bend, straighten them. The other thing I tend to see is people scooting way far away to do these, which is very, very hard on your shoulders. So if you've ever heard somebody say that dips hurt their shoulders nine times out of 10, they're too far away. Imagine using that step to scratch your tailbone. You keep your butt really close to that step for safety, okay? Moving on, lunges. Lunges are something like squats where you don't have to use any weight at all. You can just use your body weight and do them here. You can also use one hand weight. If you choose to use one, you're gonna be holding it, again, opposite, opposite. So whatever leg is in front, the weight's in the opposite leg, or opposite hand, and we go here. You can also weight it with a weight in each hand right here. If you have the barbell, some of our tracks, not all of them, but some of our lunge tracks will have you place it up here the same way as you did for squats. If, we, if we're doing this and you've got the hand weights, you'll just grab one in each hand and hold them here as your alternative. And I do say these through all the pump it ups, I give you options so you don't have to remember all this. I'm just showing you. I will remind you of these things during the class. So there's not gonna be a test after this. You don't have to commit this entire video to memory. All right, so lunges. I'm gonna use no weights at all. Again, a couple of common things that I see with lunges that are an injury waiting to happen at worst and at best are not effective. Thing number one is people who don't get their legs far enough apart and you're right here. This is just a knee killer. <laughs> it's just a knee killer and it's not effective. So take a gigantic step back, giant. If you can put your back heel down, that means your legs are too close together. Let me say that again. If you can put your back heel down, your legs are too close together. So you want to take a giant step back so that it is impossible to put that back heel to the ground. Then you're going to tuck your pelvis under. So you line everything up so it's level with the floor. Again, if you can put your heel down, your pelvis is tilting the wrong way. So bring that back heel up off the ground by bending that back leg and tucking the pelvis under. You dig your front heel into the ground. We go straight down and up. The other common thing that I tend to see is a leaning forward in a lunge. I tend to, I call this the escalator, <laughs> where people are going like this. They're coming down, but they're somehow, they're riding an escalator and going forward. I want you to think of this as an elevator. So you're going straight down, straight up. The other thing that I like visuals, as you can tell, imagine there's a nail right there under your back knee, and as you're coming down, you're boom, pounding that nail into the ground, pounded into the ground. If you're wasting motion here, check out what's going on with my back leg. It is not bending as much, so you're not getting that muscle benefit. You're putting a lot of motion here, and you're also losing the glutes on that front leg. So nice, tall, legs far apart. Dig your front heel in, keep your back heel up, Straight down elevator, straight up. What you should feel is quads and hip flexors on the back leg, glutes and hamstrings on the front leg, and of course, lots of calves. 
If you have any issues with your legs, which I know some people do have injuries or health issues that make lunges not possible or painful, just talk to me, send me a message because we always have modifications that we can use for people who have special circumstances. I'm not gonna put all of the modifications in this video, but just know that they exist, okay? So if you're having a trouble with lunges or any other of these tracks, let me know. I can find you an alternative that will work. All right, two more working tracks. Sometimes we do shoulders, but it's rare that we do a dedicated shoulder track, so I'm not even gonna go over that. Abs and chest. So abdominals, I'm not gonna go through every possible thing we could do for abdominals because we do a lot of different stuff with abdominals. Just know that I'm always, always, always in every abdominal track, I'm gonna give you options. Most of the time, not always, but most of the time we're gonna start with just a lift up and down. That'll always, I shouldn't say always, that'll most often be option number one, and you're welcome to stay with that option the entire time. If we're doing planks, you will always have the option to do the planks on your knees or even up against a wall. So just know that you'll always have options and choices and I will talk about those as we go through. One thing I wanna talk about is this lift here with the shoulders. You'll see this a lot, you'll see different versions, we'll do some oblique lifts, we'll do all kinds of versions of this. But your basic lift up and down, your basic curl or crunch, the one thing that you really, really wanna be cognizant of is pulling on your neck, all right? So I always pretend like you've got an apple or an orange, stick it underneath your chin. So as you're lifting, you can even use your other fist. As you're lifting, you keep that orange under your chin. If you're smushing the orange and you're just squishing it, that means you're yanking on your neck. And generally that also means that your shoulders are staying on the ground. So look at the ceiling, orange or apple underneath your chin, and as you lift, you're maintaining this space and you're pulling your shoulders up off the ground, not just your head. So you're sucking your belly in, really activating. You should feel the shoulders leave the ground. See what, see what I'm doing here that looks like a lot of action? is I'm yanking on my neck. I, I do feel a little bit of abs kicking in, but I'm also risking injury, and my shoulders are staying planted right where they are. So shoulders up and down. It's gonna feel a lot harder, but it's gonna be a lot more effective and safe. All right, one more track, and then we're gonna be out of here. Chest, and again, you can use hand weights, or you can use the barbell. If you're using a barbell, it's gonna err a little bit on the lighter side, light to medium. If you're using the hand weights, again, I really want you to go heavy for the hand weights. I'm gonna do both of these because they are slightly different. With the hand weights, again, just like when we're doing the back, you have the possibility of screwing up the form with chest more with hand weights than you do with the barbell because the barbell lo locks your arms and your hands into one track of motion. In case you couldn't tell, I highly recommend that if you ever are able to get a barbell, get one. They really do make a difference. If you've got hand weights, you're gonna use what you have. But if you ever have the opportunity to get a barbell, you will notice the difference because it forces good form where sometimes the hand weights let you cheat a little bit. So hand weights, the biggest thing to watch out for, pretend I have a weight in each hand, is I see this a lot with chest. What's going on here? You see where my hands are as I'm coming down? I'm gonna turn down like this. Do you think this is working much of our chest? No, it is not. So I'm trying to give you a cross section here. Pretend I'm lying down on my back looking at the ceiling. But in this position, I'm lying on my back looking at the ceiling. This is what that's looking like. So what you're gonna feel is triceps, maybe a tiny bit of chest, but really not much. In order to get the chest, you gotta get those arms at right angles. So as you're coming down, you're out here. Again, if you've got a barbell, you have to, all right? So you're coming down, your arms are making that capital letter L. It's gonna seem a lot easier to go like this. I don't want you to do that. I want you to go out here and come down and up. The other thing is no matter whether you have the barbell or the hand weights, the floor is hot lava. We never let our elbows touch the ground. If you let them touch the ground, it's gonna seem a lot easier, but it's a lot less effective. So before you touch the ground, pop right back up again. Sometimes we'll do some down and holds. Don't let your elbows touch the ground. Really activate those muscles by holding them, hovering just above the floor. If you have an aerobic step, when we do the chest, it will help your form actually, if you can lie down on that aerobic step. If you don't have one, you're just gonna lie on the floor and pretend it is hot lava. So real quick, I'm gonna start with the hand weights just to practice here. Your feet are gonna be on the ground. 
You're tucking your pelvis under and drawing your belly into the spine. Thing number one you wanna do is pull your shoulder blades back so they're flat on the ground underneath you. If you're starting from a bad position, it's hard to get the accurate work and be safe about it. So pull your shoulders back, flatten them out. Remember that clothespin? You don't wanna lie down on the clothespin, that would hurt. But it's that same thing where your shoulders are pinned back so they're flat on the ground. We start up overhead and as we come down, elbows never touch the ground. I'm hovering just about an inch off the ground and check out where my hands are. They're not here. So this is what you have to be careful of. We're out here making a capital letter L with both arms, okay? Sometimes you'll see we do wide flies where our palms are facing inward and we open and we hug around the tree. We flap our wings. These are wide flies. These are chest presses. If you're doing chest presses with the barbell, again, it's a little easier to maintain that grip. So when you come down, you've got that capital L and you're lining everything over the middle of your chest. That's the other thing to be careful of is to make sure you're, L, you're not coming here where the collarbone is. Whether you've got barbell or hand weights, when you come down, see where that's lining up? Right over the sternum. So right over the middle of the chest, not up here. Middle of the chest, there's your lineup. Whoopsie. One more thing, push-ups, because you're gonna see push-ups in chest sometimes, sometimes triceps. We'll see different versions of them, but the basic gist of these, you'll see tricep ones, spider ones. You can always do a push-up on the wall. So if you need to, you can just stand up, walk your weight back, and do your push-ups off the wall. You can do them on the seat of a chair if you want to. You stand up, get your weight over your chair. You can do them on the ground, on your knees or your toes. One thing, no matter what version you're doing, doesn't matter what version you're doing, is to line up your chest with your thumbs. So, from any position, you can cheat and do a bad form from any of these positions by keeping your weight back here and then trying to do a push-up. Do we see this? Do we see where my weight is? My weight is way back here behind my hands, and I'm trying to do a push-up from here. What I need to do is bring my chest, line it up with my thumbs, so that my weight is right here. That works whether you're on a chest, the wall, knees, or toes. Get your weight forward, not back. All right, if you guys have any questions at all, and by the way, those last couple tracks are interchangeable. We do abs, chest, or sometimes chest abs. Sometimes we do triceps on the floor if we're doing skull crushers and then we'll finish with a nice stretch and cool down at the end. Thank you guys for joining me for this Pump It Up How To. Please let me know if you have any questions or if you need any modifications, I am happy to work with you to provide them. Bye guys, see you later.